All right, those of you working on your capstone design, I wanted to go over, and you're writing your final report, I wanted to go over some things that, are, that really sort of tie in this entire class. And really, I feel like this video needs to be shown at the beginning of capstone, probably like back in August. And it basically goes over how you design a system of systems. And this is sort of, this is called, a lot of people call this the, uh, the systems engineering uh, v and v, where V and V is verification and validation. Okay? And it's really important when you go out in the world and you design something because a, a lot of times you might be pigeonholed into one thing where you design one subsystem. But if you're a manager of a big project and you have systems that are interacting with other systems, you have a very big systems engineering problem and you need to worry about this V here. The way this graph works is that as you start, you go into more high level stuff and as you go down, you get deeper into the design and then from here down is all design and when you get down to the bottom, that's when you start building and testing and you come back out to the point where you get to operation and maintenance, which is the point where you're giving your product to the consumer. Okay, and so as you get down to lower on the graph, you're deeper into design and deeper in the weeds. And then when you come out, you're, you know, like for example, concept operations, that's just like coming up with a concept and then giving it to the consumer. The consumer doesn't care how the cell phone works or the car works. They're the average consumer, that is. They just want it to work and they want you to give it to them. So it's more high level. Okay, in the green are milestones that you need to meet as you come through here. So you look like at the very bottom, right before you start building, you have a critical design review. And the critical design review is the entire thing is designed soup to nuts, you're ready to start building. Okay? From left to right, this is time. Okay? So you start at the beginning with the concept and you move deeper and deeper into the design. Time goes by, and then finally you're ready to build, you start fabricating, and you come up into integration, test, verification, validation. Okay, so that's kind of how the overall flow of this whole graph works. So let's talk about one, each one of these things slowly. When you talk about this with a concept of operations, it depends on your project. So if you were in Design Go Fly, your concept might mean, I want an airplane that can deliver food and water to somebody in need. That's the concept, okay? There's no requirements whatsoever, it's just the concept. Uh, if you're in the rocket launch team, it might mean that you need to launch to a, a, a launch a rocket and take pictures on the way down. Just a very, very initial concept. If you're doing an air taxi, I need to have a drone carry a you know two adults from point A to point B. So that's just your concept. You could probably draw a nice, pretty picture, maybe do a rendering of it, some CAD drawing, some some PR things like that. Most projects never get off the ground after this. They, they go in magazines, they go and uh, there's a lot of hype around them, but they never really get deeper into the design. Uh, you guys doing Capstone, when you get your concept, that's what basically you get in your project back in October. So you get your project and you have a concept. Now it's time to meet with the stakeholders and determine what your requirements are. So if you're designing a rocket, you need specific requirements. What's your payload? What are you carrying? How high do you need to go? If you're an airplane, same thing. What's your payload? How fast do you need to go? What's your endurance? How long do you need to fly? How far do you need to fly? You know, do you need conventional control surfaces so that you can you know, fly normally? Are you looking for glide ratio? Or are you looking for speed? What are your specific requirements that you're trying to design around? And these are things that the client is going to give you as desirements. This is what he desires. And then you need to break those down into specific requirements and then that's going to trickle down into subsystem requirements. So if you need to fly for 15 minutes, guess what? You need a power supply. You don't necessarily need a battery or an engine. You need a power supply. It's very, very uh, a brief, you know, subsystems and requirements that you need for these. If you're designing, if, you, if my concept is I want something to wash my dishes, you know, you might need a requirement that says, like, I want to wash my dishes in 15 minutes or less. That's a requirement. But that also means you need power, you need some sort of washing solution, you need a, 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 some sort of you know, dish management system. You don't need a rack, you don't need a tray, because that's too specific. You need a general term for everything, okay? You might even get too pigeonholed when you're you know, DBF and you're saying, like, I immediately need an airplane. If you need to deliver food and water to somebody in need, do you really need an airplane? What about a quadcopter? What about a ground robot? You know, a lot of people just say they immediately go and they say, this is what I need, but that's not where you're going. 
But once you have your concept and you say, I want to build an airplane, I want to build a rocket, I want to build an air taxi, you're kind of stuck. And so you need to be careful when you go in your design that you don't just throw yourself and assume too much. Once you have your requirements, at that point you can do a system functional, well sorry, you, you've got to get into your architecture before you can do your system functional read. So your architecture is how is everything going to fit together? So you need a power supply for an airplane, a motor, control surfaces, um, you need a receiver, you might need telemetry, a ground station. Uh, you're going to make a, fu a functional block diagram how all of these things fit together. Same thing with air taxi, you know, you're going to need uh, a landing pad, you're going to need a door for this the passengers to get in, you're going to need a huge power supply, you're going to need safety features, right? So if, if one of the rotors goes out, you're going to need a control system that can reconfigure in flight. All of those things are going to the architecture, so you can make sort of a functional block diagram. At that point, you can do a system functional review, which basically says, these are all of my systems, these are all of my subsystems, these are how they all interconnect, this is how the flow of my entire system is going to go together, and this is what I want to build once I get down to here, okay? Once you've done your architecture and you've done your system functional review, you want to present that to your stakeholders and your client and make sure that they like what you've presented. Okay? From there, it's time to do design. Okay? At that point, you're a senior in engineering. You need to use everything, all the tools that you've been taught over the past year. If you need to do some calculations, like lift and drag calculations and make some plots, do it. If you need to do some uh, propulsion characteristics and thrust profiles for a rocket, do it. If you need to design some really fancy control system for an air taxi to reconfigure in flight, do it. Right? If you need to worry about heat or thermal or, or structural or anything like that, you need to make some ANSYS models. All of that goes in design. And what I see with senior engineering students is they live here and they don't see that there's so much more to designing a system. Okay? They skip over this and immediately go design. And these three things and this system functional review is extremely important because you're going to get into the design and you're going to realize that everything fits together. If you make your aircraft heavier, you need bigger batteries, you need bigger motors, which means that you, you need struts that can carry more weight. You, if you're trying to fly faster, you need stronger wings, which means you're heavier, which means you need more power. All of these things fit together. Once you have your initial design, it's time to do a, pre a preliminary design review. That's where you present to the stakeholder and say, here's our preliminary design. We think we have a design that will work. It's not completely tweaked, but this is just sort of the beginning. And we think we got what we want or what you want, okay? Again, it's all for the client. The client has asked you to present something. If you're a small business and you're creating a product from nothing, then you are the, only, you are the stakeholder and you know what you want. But more often than not, a client is gonna to come to your company and say, I want you to do this. And then you need to come and present them the design. At that point, you need to do some sort of feasibility analysis. You need to really dive deeper into your design and determine, is this even possible? Can I go buy a, ro a, a propeller and motor and speed controller and battery that gives me enough thrust? Am I going to be able to overcome drag to fly fast enough to give me enough lift? Am I going to have a motor that fits inside the diameter that I designed that's going to give me enough thrust to give me enough altitude? Do I have enough control authority to control the rocket as I ascend or control the vehicle as I go around? Do I have adequate telemetry and power and endurance? Really dive deep into those equations and determine, I really think this is going to work and, I've, and I'm 100% right there. This is what people don't see though. If you find something that doesn't work, you need to go back. If you're lucky, you just need to go back to the design phase and you just need to do a redesign. Sometimes you have to go back to the architecture and you have to completely redo your architecture. I hope and pray that when you're doing your design and it's February, you know, and you've got two months to, to finish your capstone design project, I hope you don't have to go back to the architecture. And again, this is why most of this stuff needs to be done in the fall. You need to get your project and you get your, con your concept. You need to talk to your stakeholders in the fall and you need to get your requirements down and you need to get an initial architecture. That way you can start doing your design over winter break and you kind of, when you hit January, you've already got your preliminary design review under your belt, and you're working on the feasibility analysis. If you're lucky, you do your feasibility analysis, and everything checks out. It's time to do a critical design review. You do your critical design review, and that's where the stakeholders and the engineers and the subject matter experts are really going to hound you and say, you know, what about this? Have you considered this? Have you considered that? Because here's the thing. As soon as you pass, 
I say pass. As soon as everything checks out, it's time to build. You are telling your stakeholders that you are you have fully designed the thing, the entire product, and you are ready to build. Okay. Now, granted, when you start building, there will always this this is going to take a significant amount of time to build it, and so you really need to get through this stage. Don't be reckless, but you need to get through this stage quickly. And again, I see students stuck in an infinite loop just doing design, 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 and they don't worry about anything else. So really try and break out of this and say, is this feasible? And here are the equations to support it. But then go build it. After you've done your critical design review, go build it, start fabricating it. Once you build it, you're really building all of the subsystems, right? At some point, you need to integrate all of your subsystems together. And you're going to create your entire system. And that's integration. That is integrating all of your systems together. If you have an autopilot, test the autopilot by itself. If you have a power supply, test your power supply by itself. If you have a, uh, you know, a motor prop combo, test that by itself. If you have a payload mechanism, test that by itself. Okay? And then integrate everything together. And then you get into your testing plan. For small projects like capstone design projects, a test readiness review is not entirely necessary. I don't know if you can see that, but a test readiness review is not entirely necessary. But if you're doing a huge project like SLS, they have to have a test readiness pr uh, uh, platform or procedure. If they are launching a huge rocket over in Miss over at Stennis in Mississippi, that takes a huge amount of planning and flight operations to get ready for a test like that. So you can't just willy nilly. And I, granted, I'm, I, I feel like. I need to, you know, look at myself as well. I've walked into t flight test thinking everything's going to go great, and the entire thing blows up in my face. You look on my YouTube channel, I've got plenty of videos of quads flipping over, aircraft doing nose dives, and it's because I didn't, I personally didn't do this, okay? And I didn't even come up with a test readiness review. So even though you might not necessarily need a test readiness review, you really want to make sure that you've checked all of the boxes and ensured that every single thing that, you've, that you could think of, you've gone through and you said, yes, we have got the concept, the requirements, the architecture, the design, we've, we know everything will work, we've built it, we've integrated all the subsystem, and here's our flight test plan, and we have thought of all of the options, we are ready to test. Okay, let me go ahead and move over here. And so now you're coming up out of the V. If you test, and it fails, does that mean you pack up and go home? No. What it means is you might need to rebuild it. But if it failed, did it fail because pilot error? Did it fail because of component failure? Or did it fail because something was wrong with the design? Okay? Or was something wrong with the architecture? Did you think perhaps when you were flying your aircraft you didn't need a rudder and then you flew it and realized, crap, I really need a rudder. You're going to have to go back to the architecture and redo the architecture of the problem. Right? Did the telemetry work when you were flying? Perhaps you need to go back and do another feasibility analysis. Did you have enough lift? Did the aircraft stall? Right? Did the drone even get off the ground? Right? You might need to go back and, and, ver and check that what, what was the reason for my failure? Okay. And, and, and start over. And this is why it's extremely important to get through this, and again, don't be reckless, but get through this quickly and test. Because testing is the end all be all, right? If you present to me this 300 page report and tell me that this drone is gonna fly, I might believe you, right? If you've done all the math and everything like that, but if you fly a drone right in front of my face or right in front of my house, I will immediately know that you've done, you, everything works, okay? It's completely obvious. And so testing is the end all be all, all right? But that's not it. A lot of students, so a handful of students, they st they're stuck in this info loop of design. Uh, another handful of students, they do a test, they pack up and they go home. And that's not the end, okay? If you test and the drone flew, or the aircraft flew, or the rocket took off, how do you know that your stakeholders are happy? Did you forget? It's April, right? It's April in the semester. You've been doing capstone design for the past eight months. You don't care. You've got senioritis and you want to graduate. But you still have to write a final report. And how do you know that your stakeholders or the judges at your design symposium are going to be happy? You've got to verify 
that you've satisfied every requirement. Did you have a flight speed requirement? Prove to me that the aircraft flew that fast. Did you have a payload requirement? Prove to me that you carried that payload. Okay? Validate your design and connect it back to your requirements. Every test and needs to be connected to a requirement. If you do a prop test or a motor spin test, any test you do, it needs to be to prove that you've satisfied those requirements. Okay? Not only that, go back to the concept. If the Navy comes to you and says, I want a blue truck, and that's the concept they present to you, I would hope at the beginning you say, well, does it have to be blue? Can it be white? And then, you know, can I build a car instead? But if they tell you, like, no, you know, we're the, uh, you know, we're, we're the Screaming Eagles or something like that, and our, our favorite color is blue, and it has to be blue, then like, okay, fine, I'll make that a requirement. When you get back through this, and you get to operation, and you're giving them these trucks, did you make sure it was blue? Is it a truck that they wanted, or did you make something completely different? Okay? If you go willy-nilly, and you get really down into the weeds as a senior, and you put on the blinders, and you just build whatever you want, and you come back out of it, and the stakeholders come back, and they say, can did the plane carry the payload? Yeah, sure, you've built this beautiful airplane, and it flies great, but did it carry the payload? Did it complete the mission? Okay? As a capstone design student, I would say here is where you're done, as a capstone design student. Okay? You probably want to do a system verification review, not necessarily with your stakeholders. This will probably come out in the design symposium or I would hope in a final meeting with your project advisor. And again, this is basically saying, did you build the concept? Did you satisfy the requirements? And did it work? Did you do enough tests to prove that it worked? And that's how all of this shakes out, okay? When you're actually building for a real customer, at some point you need to start giving your product to the consumer and they're gonna operate that product and they're gonna have issues with it they're not going to know all of the idiosyncrasies that come up with, with, with building it. You know, when you deliver a washing machine to some consumer, they want to put their dishes in it, put some soap, close it, and turn it on. Okay? They don't want to hook up their Raspberry Pi to it and run some code. They don't want to do any of that. They want it to be turnkey and they want it to work. And so you're going to have some issues with operation just from user error. After that, you're going to get into maintenance. And maintenance is, things are going to start breaking. Well, what components are failing quicker than others? Do you need to go back and do a redesign and perhaps make that component stronger? And at the same time, if you're doing software support, you know, is there something that you can do with the code to make it a little bit easier for the, for the consumer to operate your product? Okay? And again, all of this sort of fits together. So don't put the blinders on and live in here and design. Okay? I want you to live... At least as a capstone design student, I want you to live in this first 80% of the B. Now when you graduate, remember that you're pretty much going to do this V for the rest of your life. Unless you're working at, you know, if, you're, if they pigeonholed you in the corner of a cube farm and you're working on some spar for, you know, some wing and you're on a team of a thousand engineers. But if you're lucky and you're project manager and you're overseeing everything from concepts to maintenance, you're living in this entire realm. And your capsule and design projects is your first opportunity to get you in that direction. Cool? Hopefully this helped. Um, if you have any questions, post in the comments.